right? I have built my latest company from a zero to a $150 million revenue business in the last seven years, and I've spent the first five and a half of it being more the head of HR than being the CEO. If even more fun, literally, the phone call I was on just now before I came out here for 22 minutes, literally hanging up one minute before I took the stage, was 98% an HR conversation with a key executive. I am confused, and this is actually even better now as I'm talking. The fact that this conference is this subject matter and is in this city, and I'm sure quite a bit of the content that you'll be hearing will be more tech-based, more AI-based, more big data-based, more CRM-based, more SaaS-based, It's insane to me how excited I am about the future of the world because as technology commoditizes shit that doesn't matter, all of us are gonna be forced into the things that actually do matter, which is people. The punchline is I actually suck at almost everything, hard skill wise. You know, in hindsight, I can't read. I'm clearly dyslexic, I just haven't been, you know, you know, analyzed that way. I am terrible at everything other than intuition, empathy, gratitude, EQ. It's actually all I've got. And what's really crazy to me is that the emotional intelligence and the people aspect, and when you're great at it, and when you define HR the way I do, it's funny, I've been an entrepreneur and only have owned my own businesses. I didn't realize until building an agency like I have in the last couple years, hiring people that have worked other places, I actually didn't know, this is not a joke, this is back to being very narrow, I didn't even realize that the HR brand was a negative, I thought it was a positive. I'm a very yes man oriented operator, so because I micromanaged HR in my two companies, the wine business and VaynerMedia, I would always basically just say yes. Like if you wanted more money, if you wanted to change something, to me it was all offense. See an incredible thing is not talked about in the world, which is we will all sit here as professionals or people of interest in this world, but the fact of the matter is 99% of businesses are CFO based. 99% of businesses care about dollars and cents, and so what they do is they make decisions in 90 day terms, not in 90 year terms. I stand up here as somebody that's obsessed with HR, obsessed with people, look at it as a financial offense because I believe in retention and continuity which then is a gateway to speed which is then an advantage when you compete against any other business. Speed is the ROI, it is the differentiator in sports and in business. Speed is what matters and continuity and having people stay in a place for a long time leads to speed but even more importantly, the thing that leads to speed and execution is when our employees don't have to sit at their desk and think about politics and dumb shit and actually think about the work. And the reality is all of this, appreciate it because that's the punchline, right? I'll take that clap, thank you bro. It's just true, it's staggering how much percentage of every single employee in the world right this second is thinking about how to navigate through the political matrix versus getting the actual work done. And so for me, I'm agnostic, I'm unemotional. I could care less how you're trying to achieve this, whether it is through tech or products or services, but I'll tell you how I think about it. At VaynerMedia, It took me a long time to hire the person to really run our HR. We don't call it HR, we call it the PET team. It stands for people and experiences. Her name is Claude Silver. She's our chief heart officer. I believe in branding and positioning. Once I discovered that HR maybe didn't have the best branding, I wanted to make it very black and white of how I thought about it. She on the org chart sits ahead of my COO and my CFO. She's the second most important person in my company. She leads with her heart. When there is a debate between emotion, continuity, what's best for the internal vibe versus the CFO, this hurts our P&L, we will not hit our numbers. She wins 99 out of 100 times. And it's just how we think about the world. And so for me, you could talk about all the commodity programming that I genuinely believe will dictate this conference and this conversation. I think the more important question is, 
what are your organizations actually doing about it? And if you're the sweetest person on earth and you really give a fuck, but your company at the top doesn't allow you to make the actual decisions based on the right thing in a five-year macro versus a five-minute micro because numbers are gonna get hit, you're not gonna get anything accomplished. You can think ideologically all you want. Everything stems from what the engine and the finish line is within this organization. And so for me, what I'm fascinated by is actually, how many people in here are a CFO? Raise your hand. Perfect, fuck, this is going great. (laughs) I'm serious, actually. So for me, I think you guys are actually gonna like where I'm going with this. I mean, I think this may be a curveball of a content conversation, but let me tell you where I'm going with this. I think, I think this conference next year needs 150 CFOs in the audience. Let me explain. I don't think about HR and people and all of this warm and fuzzy stuff of how I think about myself because I think I'm Mother Teresa or the nicest guy that ever walked the earth. I think of it because I'm an assassin entrepreneur who's trying to buy the New York Jets and I think it's financially viable to actually give a fuck about people. I think when you actually have a black and white conversation with a CFO that Karen or Rick, the CFO of this company, actually could understand why what HR is supposed to be doing, which is retention and happiness. Do you know the only thing I think about in my company, I have 750 employees, the only thing I care about is on a one-to-one basis, what drives them and what do they care about in life? And by the way, these cliche fucking headlines like millennials care about this or Gen Y, it's so ludicrous. The amount of 25-year-olds that I have in my office right now who'd rather work 19 hours a day if I just paid them $1,000 more because the only thing they give a fuck about is $1,000 more or the amount of 52 year olds that care far more about work-life balance right now because for him, he just went through this thing in his family that makes him wanna work a little bit less. These headlines, these generalizations are the death, are the death of organizations. The only tech that you should give a fuck about is the one that gives you the most data on an individual basis for every single person that works for you that is in real time. Because I don't care what you told me a month ago about what's important to you. If what's important to you today has changed, I need to have the nimbleness within my organization to adjust to that reality. And again, and make, let me make this perfectly clear, because I sit up here truly believing that my HR skills far more than my marketing skills or salesmanship skills have been the defining foundation to why I've been able to build big businesses, I sit here and remind everybody, the reason I want 150 CFOs in this audience next year is because I want to suffocate, suffocate this conversation to them so that they understand this is financially viable. That when you make a decision in a 90 day window, that is financially ugly to them in their fucking Excel sheet, that the trickle down economics of that decision make their financial sheet look really pretty in a 24 month window. This is financially practical. There is nothing that can be said or talked about at this conference that matters anything other than do you fundamentally understand what every single employee in your organizations cares about in life right this second. There are 17 meetings going on in my company right now that sound like the following. Hey blank, Karen is trying to ruin me. Or I really hate Rick. Or I'm being suppressed. Or my favorite, you know, I love middle management. They're either arguing that they don't have somebody above them that's giving them mentorship, or they're arguing and complaining that somebody above them is micromanaging them. They're just complaining, right? And so that is happening at scale. That is the biggest action within my organization. And we spend 94, 95% of our time on things that have nothing to do with salary or hiring or firing or promoting in our engagements within our organization. And it scales and it works and it will be. And let me remind everybody in here, when, when everybody talks about whatever they're gonna talk about at this conference, specifically, I'm sure, augmented, 
you know, animated, all these things that are gonna take out jobs and all these things that are coming at a macro that are so much further away than we realize because we love to think something's happening tomorrow when it's happening in 15 years. When that's all being talked about, please understand what it means. Of course, over a 50-year macro, yes, there will be jobs that are eliminated. Guess what? That's always happened. It's not as good to be a farmer as it used to be. Back in the 1300s, being a mason was a really good fucking idea, right? Like, everything gets wiped out. That's the punchline. That's not what you need to be focusing on. For everybody here, as an impact in the next 20 to 30 years of your career, what you need to recognize is that hard skills and information continue to be commoditized. What you need to wrap your head around is what the way I've run my organizations, which is the people that are best at their jobs are far more often fired because they're not as good on the emotional intelligence side. The way I frame up my company is called the honey empire, right? Honey over vinegar first, then empire. Then you have to be best at what you do. And why I do that is not because it sounds good, it's because hard skills and talent continues to be, continues, and this is true, it continues to be commoditized by technology. It is far easier for technology to attack IQ, information, and certain skills that it's able to attack the emotional intelligence, the gray, the thing that has never and will never be replaced, which is the human operating system of these emotions. So, the energy that I'm most passionate to bring to this audience today is, are we having the right macro conversation? Are we gonna spend a lot of time talking about crossing the T's and dotting the I's in here? Are we gonna talk about all the fucking semantics that we love to pander that are just so disproportionately secondary to the punchline, which is, I can give you the greatest fucking HR SaaS tools of all time. If you don't actually give a fuck about people or you're not in a place where you financially have the ability to make a judgment call once you decided you give a fuck about people, it doesn't matter what tool you have. And that's it. Honestly, I really have nothing else to fucking say. I'll try to fill up my time. <laughs> and you know what's fun, and, and, and that was super important for me, and I'm, I, I'm so thankful you guys just gave me that. I'll tell you why. That's the punchline, and you guys know it, right? Like, like, that reaction, that clapping, that was for nothing other than you acknowledging the truth. We all know it, so to me, to me, as I, the way I think about speaking is very much the way I think about running an organization. It's just 5149. It's just my job to give my employees 51% of the value of the relationship. It creates stickiness. I know what to do with my 49%. It's why I've had a good speaking career. I don't come up here for anything else than how do I bring you the most possible value in my half an hour that you actually leave with something. And when I think about this group of people, people that I probably admire the most in the professional landscape, if you actually give a fuck about it, right? I think to myself, let's just have the real conversation. Like, it's far more ROI positive for what you're trying to achieve in your organization or your life if you use my energy in this 30 minutes as the catalyst to push you over the edge to go back home and have the real conversation than any tactic I'm gonna give you. I'll give you tactics. Let me tell you what I do. It's insane that every company doesn't follow every action and every word out of every single one of their employees' minds and thoughts on social media. I have a better indicator on everything about my employees because of social than I do by anything. What do you think is happening in resumes? 360 reviews are the biggest fucking horseshit of all time. The fuck is a 360 review? You mean another human being giving feedback on somebody completely and utterly predicated on their vested interest? You mean we have not figured out as a world yet that everybody usually has a landing spot and once they get there they go on complete defense and they will tear down everything around them that creates a vulnerability for somebody taking their spot? Have we not figured this out? So, so we are doing tactics to appease ourselves and the best people in this room know they're completely shit. And so my question is, so what? Because you know you're part of the problem if you're just walking and going through it and not believing in it. I look at you the same way I look at marketing executives every day that are pouring money into TV and print and radio. They don't believe in it. They just know their organization accepts it and then they're just living. I know that the far majority 
of you are doing things within organizations that you don't believe in, you're just doing them because they're the way the machine has been set up. And so then I ask you, are you any different than the people that you're judging that are doing the same within that organization?